Will you be showing it to something? Yeah. Okay, ready? Yeah. Creating a problem. So, um, oh, wow. one disciple of Shivanarayan Maharaj goes to, um, made a CD of two CDs. One of uh, most of our paintings that we did for the British. And a CD of some of the paintings we did for the Prabhupada. So the family will be showing that. And if you can say it that way, on. I can see it and I'll speak around with the speech. And by that, I'll share some of the stories and philosophy through the artwork. Where is that? Probably. Is there any way you could pay for that? I like it. So the name of uh, the art that we made for Brute is called Bhakti Art. So we just put in that and part we did for Prabhupada as well. And there are three sections, Bhagavad Gita, Shema, Bhagavatam, and Chaitanya Charitam. Bhagavad Gita. So we'll start with Bhagavad Gita. Uh, I think it was in Vera, or was it Amy, who asked, uh, please talk about how we can get from this world to that world, from where we are now to transcendent. So, We'll try to do that through the painting. First, we paint the painting so quickly, and then we start to make them go one by one. Try to do something? Yep. One by one, and we can explain them quickly. Did she sit on the chair? Uh, no, I'm in the way. Okay, so we can do that. And everybody sit through? So this uh, is a painting we did for the Titanitary Comica, which shows the relationship of Suri and disciple. And that relationship is the beginning of spiritual life. Because without material senses, that means the eye, nose, touch, and to touch, taste, we cannot experience the Supreme Lord. We only experience matter. So therefore, God himself comes in a form looking like a material body. Um, that is, a spiritual master is not the full God, but is a manifestation of God. And he brings with him the powers of God, and he's also a personal associate of God or Krishna in the spiritual world. That is, he's a playmate of Krishna. And this plainly and manifestation of Krishna, manifestation of Nityananda, manifestation of Balaram, come to this material world in order to uh, make us qualify so that he can take us to that transcendental realm. He calls it picking um, clothed flowers and nourishing them that they bloom and become offerable to Radha and Krishna in the spiritual world of Goloka Vrindavan. So, there's another manifestation of Krishna who you see in the heart of both the Guru and the disciple. And that manifestation is called the Super Soul or Paramatma. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that in his forearm form of Paramatma, he's situated in the hearts of all beings. He's also situated in every atom. Andantarisam Paramana Shayantarasam. He's greater than the greatest. He breathes out millions of universes just by one breath. 
and inhales millions of universes by his inhalation. When he's that big, and he also can become so small that he sits in the atom and he sits in the heart of the body, and he also sits in the heart of our soul. So that same super soul is externally manifested as the Guru. So you can see the Guru is in the heart, the super soul is in the heart of Guru and in the heart of the disciple. So everything that the, the bona fide Guru, the self-realized Guru, tells us is what Krishna, Krishna wants him to tell us. He doesn't make up anything by any limited sense perception or limited mental speculation. But he's like the mouthpiece of Krishna. So you can see, you can see that the Paramatma, uh, that his hand is raised. I don't know if you can see that from where you are. His hand is raised and the Guru's hand is raised. So Krishna in the heart of the disciple, we can't hear what God is telling us because our ears are imperfect. Even things that are around us we misunderstand. Like if we're waiting for somebody, for some beloved husband, a wife, girlfriend, or boyfriend, and then we hear some rustling leaves, we think, oh, is she coming? Was she coming? No, she's not coming. So our hearing deceives us all the time. Or we think, did I just hear that person criticize me behind my back to that other person? And we get all paranoid for nothing, because actually they were talking about something else. So our ears are always deceiving us. So we can't hear what to speak of hearing anything on the transcendental platform. So we can't hear God speaking to us, so he comes outside in the form of the Guru to tell us anything in a way that we can easily hear. So that if we want to be connected with that supreme, absolute reservoir of all existence, then we have to connect ourselves to his manifestation as the spiritual master. Now you see on the altar, just like in Panchali, do you call it Panchali or Radha? Okay. So, on Radha's altar, you see the deities of Radha and Krishna. But similarly, on the altar in the painting, we see the deities of Radha and Krishna and also Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which um, Radha Dasi and Jitomar Prabhu also have on their altar. So you can see that the hand of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is up, and Krishna's hand is a little bit up, and he's playing the flute. So that's to show that they're also saying the same thing, because they are the source, those personalities on the altar, they're the source of the Paramatma, or the super soul in every atom and in everybody's heart. And they're also the source of their manifestation, the spiritual master, who looks like a human being, but he isn't. So I hope you'll all be going to Kona in a few days to see that very person who's the manifestation of Krishna himself. So our, our whole relationship with Krishna not only uh, in the beginning of our Krishna consciousness, but as we develop, and even when we become perfect, our whole relationship with Krishna depends upon our relationship with our spiritual master. So, with these material bodies, it's difficult sometimes to follow instructions, like uh, no smoking, no drinking, no sex, no gambling, no going to movies, no eating things that aren't offered to Krishna. They're hard to do, but they become easy when we think of all these things philosophically and what we'll be gaining by giving up these very, you know, tiny nothing for anything. Like, for example, suppose a girl likes a boy, and the boy has a good shape, and she's a big fat barrel. And she wants to attract him, but she can't because she's a big fat barrel. So she goes, so she goes on a starvation diet. And she's happy to do it. She doesn't experience the austerities, but she's just thinking how to get that boy. So if we think of the goal and, and the value of what we have by giving up the grungy things, then it's easy, much easier to do. Okay. Yeah.
Now this is also very interesting because it's about that strange super soul. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that um, there are two birds. Well, actually it's in the purport of the Gita. That there are two birds living in the same tree. One bird represents us, the tiny super soul, who's one, the size of us is not five feet or six feet or four feet, but it's one ten thousand, the upper tip of the hair. That's the size of the soul. And we are in the body, um, crazily going after the fruits of the body. Looking, you can see that wild bird that does. He's like grabbing at the fruits, trying to get some sweet fruits, which are sometimes appear to be sweet, but then he goes for the next bite and he gets a bitter one. So that's compared. So you see that guy down there in the circle? He's, you know, he wants this girl, but she doesn't want him. So he's grabbing her and she's trying to resist him. And they're having this big struggle. And in the meantime, there's that other bird, the very beautiful friend bird, who's not only with us, the soul, in this particular body, but he's been with us in innumerable millions of bodies. When we were aardvark, cockroaches, snakes, elephants, demigods, kings and queens, he's been with us in every body just waiting for us to turn to him. So you see that that bird, that friendly bird, who is looking at the crazy bird, is down there in the circle as the super soul saying, you're looking for happiness, but you're finding so many sour fruits. And you must find sour fruits, because you're looking in a place that's not really real. You're looking in gross matter and your spirit soul. Gross matter is pus, blood, stool, urine. And you are Gashriananda, eternal, full of birth and knowledge. So just turn to me and I'll give you everything you want. So that same super soul is manifest as Guru. He's internally manifest as a super soul and externally manifest as a super soul, as the spiritual master. Okay, next. And here, shows the ludicrousness of us doing anything but uh, taking full shelter of the spiritual master. Uh, when we get initiated by the spiritual master, Prabhupada explained that the word initiate means to begin. So it means we're beginning our spiritual life, not that, oh, now I'm initiated, now I'm liberated, I'm free. But initiate means to begin. So here's like Amy said, from where I am now. Okay, so here's where we are now. You see that circle? At least that's where I am. I don't know where everybody else is. See that circle on top? The lady is cleaning the birdcage, but she's so absorbed, and it's a beautiful birdcage too, it's golden. She's totally absorbed in cleaning the birdcage, but she's forgetting to see the bird inside. So what happened? If you could see, I don't know how close you could see the picture, but uh, the bird is gay. He's suffered, suffered, ka, ka, but she's just absorbed in the, in the cage, so the bird just died in misery. Similarly, we are fully absorbed in taking care of the body and the there are two kinds of bodies, actually. Gross body, made of pus, blood, stool, and urine, bodily air. And the subtle body, made of mind, intelligence, and full of ego, which is thinking that I am this gross body. And everything in relation to this gross body, pus and blood, is mine. As Prabhupada once said, I went with him to a, um, the university engagement at Boston University. That before I think most of you were born, in 1969. And there he was telling the students that this body, which you are soaping so nicely, 
will turn into three things after you die. One of them is, um, depending on your religion, one of them is ashes, one of them is stool, and one of them is dust. If you're a Christian, then it turns into dust. Dust thou word, dust thou be. If you're a Hindu, then they burn you and it turns into ashes. And if you're a party, they just throw your body in the street and get eaten by the dogs and then it turns into their soul. So this body which you're soaking so nicely turns into these three things. So you can see this king. He's got, he has everything. One of his servants is fanning him. One of his servants is feeding him peel grapes. Not just grapes, but peel grapes. And the king is full of anxiety because his real self isn't being taken care of. So the spiritual master teaches us how to take care of our real self and feed the bird inside the cage. Okay. And here we are, again, regarding Amy's question, from where we are to where we want to be. Here we are, down under the clouds of the three modes of nature. Now one of those guys down there, he sinks on the boss. He has the cane and he's ordering the other guy. You're not working hard enough. And the other guy, who is a worker, bent over. He's saying, oh, please don't fire me. Or he's saying, please give me a raise. See how hard I'm working. And they both think that they're independent. But actually, they're not the controllers at all. They're puppets, as you can see. The strings are going to the three modes of nature. One is ignorance. Ignorance means putting off everything that I should be doing now, following vows, not following vows, um, eating all kinds of abominable things, smoking, drinking, eating meat, fish, eggs, and not only that, even eating good things, healthy things, that aren't offered to Krishna. Because Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer or give away should be done as a sacrifice to me. Otherwise, we're buying points in the material world. And he says, if you offer me with love and devotion a leaf, a fruit, a flower, and some water, then I will accept and eat it. And one who doesn't, one who eats foods that are not first offered in sacrifice, he is verily eating only sin. So it looks like somebody is so nice and they're helping somebody else. Or it looks like somebody serving their friends very, you know, mode of goodness, uh, fruits and vegetables, organic. But if it's not offered to Krishna in the proper way, not that, well, Krishna's everywhere and everything, so I'll just like say, hey, it's offered. And in fact, the food's also Krishna, so it's all Krishna. But actually offered in the proper way, in the proper mantra, in the proper mood, under proper guidance. First, not, it's not even that we could even offer anything to Krishna because Krishna is so far away in Goloka Vrindavan. Right here, it looks like Krishna's on the altar. And he is. But the altar is not here, the altar is in Goloka Vrindavan. And our Gurudev, he can take our boga, boga means unoffered food, and bring it all the way there to Goloka Vrindavan, because he's there, and he can offer it. So offering it in the proper way, then we become free from the reaction. So what is the reaction? If the food isn't offered, then I have to um, suffer the result of hurting another living entity and eating another living entity. Of course, I'm not eating your soul, I'm eating your body. But I've had to make somebody suffer in order to enjoy. But if I offer it first to Krishna, then he takes the reaction, there's no reaction, and we, um, two good things happen. One, we become free from all of our past karma, and present karma. That means we become 
free from birth, old age, disease, and death, and all the threefold misery, misery is caused by the body, mind, uh, other living entities, and material nature. Like somebody was saying, but me and the sun is still really hot here, because we just came from freezing India, freezing Frankfurt, freezing San Francisco. But you think, oh, it's really cold, I can't wait to get to Kona where it's going to be warm. So that's the misery caused by material nature. So, misery is caused by the body, misery is caused by the mind, either a loss or a fear of loss or a fear of getting something that I don't really want to gain. Misery is caused by other living entities, either my boss fires me or a mosquito bites me and I get malaria. And this is called the material nature. So, that's one good thing that happens when properly offered my boga. And another thing that could happen is that I get to do good for others. Because that soul that's in the fruit or vegetable or incense that I offer, you may say, well, what soul is in the incense? None is in the incense, but they're in the tree that made the incense or the flower that made the incense. And even though the flower doesn't know, or the tree doesn't know, or the orange doesn't know, that is being offered, still, Krishna has a whole system. He knows, and his accountants know, and they make that living being that's being offered uh, come to a high stage where they can take a good birth for getting into devotional service. There's also, even when I throw out prasadam, you say I couldn't finish it, and I put it in the refrigerator and I forget it was there, so a week later I find it, because my refrigerator is so crowded, and I find this old thing, and it's uh, moldy and everything frozen. So I throw it out. But even on throwing it out, there are thousands and millions of insects and bacteria that you're going to take that properly offered prasadam and get a higher birth for engaging in bhakti. So therefore, even when we throw out prasadam, it's an act of love and devotion. Because we, we seem to be throwing it in the bin, in a garbage can, but we're throwing it with devotion that, here are all your living entities, take some prasadam and become free from your past sin. So it's such a wonderful thing. Thanks. Huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a terrible thing that happened. This uh, this is one of the pictures in uh, Bhagavad Gita. And actually there's two more. There's two men, these are two men, and there's two ladies. Is that one your two? These are the two ladies. Here's the one lady. She wants to be free. She doesn't want to be controlled by anybody. She doesn't want to follow rules and regulations. She wants to enjoy by her conception of enjoyment. So, as you can see, she puts herself on the cover of a nudie magazine, or she just goes out nudie and does all kinds of nudie things. And it's not that, you know, the spiritual master wants to control for the sake of controlling, but he's trying to protect it like somebody's walking backwards towards the end of a cliff, and one more step, they're going to go off. So if somebody says, hey, wait a minute, stop. It's not that he's trying to control or trying to say, you better do what I say. The thing is, if we don't do what Shastra says, and we don't do what Kuri says, there's a thing called the law of nature, where as you sow, you shall reap. So look at this poor lady. You can see on one side, she's like, you know, in a certain position on this covered in the magazine, and look at her in her next life. She's a tree in the same position. And you can see that by her consciousness, she has a girl's face on one side of her, but by her consciousness, living not by, not like a human chaste lady, but like a tree, the tree's the one that stands naked, not human, she became a tree. And then the same lady below, she likes to sleep 15 hours a day, and dream about all kinds of sense gratification. And even her day is like sleeping because she's just like absorbed in all kinds of Maya activity. 
So on one side she's a human, but she's developing the consciousness of a bear. So the next life she becomes a bear, so she can sleep for six months out of a year. And then back to the man. This is not that we're against ladies. Here goes the man. He <coughs> has no discrimination in what he eats. The top man, he's eating meat. And eating meat is not the business of a human being, it's the business of a tiger. So he's barbecuing, he's thinking that he's having a lot of fun. Nobody, there's only one life. And it's meant for, as there is one uh, atheistic philosopher named Sharbat Mary, take bar with steel, but get you, because there's no other life. <laughs> Get these. Get these if you have to beg, borrow, and steal. If you can enjoy the food. You can make a lot of safety preparations. So then what happens in his next life? You can see his mind is becoming like that of a tiger. In his next life, it goes slow. He became a tiger. Otherwise, where do all the tigers come from? Where do all the pigs come from? This guy below, he's eating lobsters and absolutely no discrimination. Um, cake with eggs in it. And what happens? He becomes the animal that has the least amount of discrimination even. That is the pig. He's eating up to the point of stool. Okay, next. So if you want to interrupt with questions at any time, feel free. Now, here's where we are now. You see there's a film strip, and in each uh, frame, the man looks a little tiny bit different, because he's running. And when seen consecutively on one screen, you can see that the man is running. So when seen in each frame, it looks like different pictures. Similarly, it looks like we have one body that's moving and growing, but actually, you have an infinite number of bodies. Just like, can, can anybody here raise your hand and tell me what I said three minutes ago? Can anyone? There's two birds. That was seven minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing that. Girl, yeah. Huh? It's for your baby. Yeah, good. So even though you can remember, you had to dredge your memory. Remember. So what to speak of um, for longer amounts of time. And the reason that we forget is very simple. Because we change our bodies at every second. So on a, on a longer term level, even the scientists say that we have a totally different body after every seven years. And what to speak of when everybody knows that they're dying and getting a new body, we totally forget. So that's where we are now. It's called transmigration. Depending upon our present activities, I may be able to escape uh, state law or government law, but I can't escape God's law. Even if I just step on a, an ant, I don't even know I'm stepping on an ant. Let's see if I know. But sometimes you find people, like there's a mosquito around, and you go, kill the mosquito. But they don't know that they have to become a mosquito and get squashed like that too. There's one story about uh, one sage who had some robbers hiding out in his house. And then the police came. This is many, many thousands of years ago from the scriptures. The police came and found the, the seed in his house. But they only thought that he must have been one of them, otherwise I would have had out of So they captured him, and they were just about to um, put him on the, it's called a tanga in India. They have a whole bunch of swords below the platform, and then they throw you off the platform onto the swords. So they were just about to do that when it came to the king's attention that this is a great stage, and he was praying kind of work, unlikely arrested. So immediately he was, um, you know, released. He said, why did you do that to me? He, he asked, he prayed to Krishna, why did you do that to me? For I was almost sad like that. 
So the Lord revealed that when you were a child, you were very mischievous, and he stabbed a little, um, little insect kind of thing. Huh? So the blade of grass, and so you would have just been killed altogether, but because you became a sage, it was minimized. So in that way, that's where we are now, and where we have to get is some very beautiful place that we'll speak about in a few minutes. Okay, next time. Now we'll try to go a little faster. Hmm? And then we'll try to go, I'll just say a couple of words about each one. This is uh, Lord Brahma creating, who's the creator of uh, all, the, all of the bodies and the beings and all the universes. And now he's creating Lord Shiva, you know there's a Shiva temple around here? So he's giving birth to Lord Shiva now, who immediately, as soon as he was born, began destroying the universe and Brahma said, wait a minute, this is the time of creation. Just sit and meditate. So uh, a lot of people worship Lord Shiva um, as the god of destruction or thinking, well, Lord Shiva smoked uh, ganja, so I can too. But he also drank an ocean of poison without getting hurt. So we can't imitate him in one way and uh, not to get not uh, get the result, the bad result. If we're like him and we're so powerful that we can also drink an ocean of poison, then we can also do other things. So, the highest form of Lord Shiva is called Gopi Swara Mahadev. Gopi Swara means that the highest form of Lord Shiva is as a Gopi. And this Gopi is um, like the guard of Krishna's life to live again. Can I ask uh, for a show of hands, how many of you who are either connected to Lord Shiva or feel connected to him? Um, one more? Okay, I'll quickly tell the story here. Lord Shiva wanted to join the Rasa dance of Radha and Krishna. So, um, Yoga Maya, Krishna's desire potency, appeared to him and said, have you done any austerities for this? And he said, no, I haven't. She said, okay, well, I'll help you. Okay. So she took him to um, Ramakun, was it? And dumped him in the water, and he came out looking like a gopi. And then he was hiding in the bush and watching Krishna's Radha dance. And Radha and Krishna and the gopis were thinking, something's wrong, I'm not feeling as happy, as ecstatic as they usually do. So um, they were looking around, there must be some outsider here. So then they saw this. Gopi, and they said, who are you? Who are you 